Welcome back to Adobe Lightroom Classic, and in this 30 Days of Lightroom video, we're going to be talking about organizing our photos. You can see over here, if we go to All Photographs, I have 22,500 photographs. That is a lot of photos to keep organized. So we're going to talk all about organizing our photos, and that is one thing I absolutely love about Lightroom. It's basically like Adobe Bridge and Adobe Photoshop had a photo editing baby and we got Adobe Lightroom. I can edit my photos, I can organize my photos. It's like the best of both worlds. That's why I love Lightroom so much. So we're gonna talk about organizing, we're gonna talk about collections. So let's get right into organizing our photographs. So on the left-hand side of our Lightroom interface, we can see this little tab over here called collections. We can make that larger and expand that or we can make it smaller but collections are critical to organization. You can see all of these collection sets that I have here that hold my collections, and for each photo shoot, I do a different collection or a different collection set. We're gonna talk about the difference between those right now. So if I wanted to create a new collection, I would go ahead up to this arrow here, and I have the option of creating a collection, creating a smart collection, and creating a collection set. Again, all different ways of organizing your images, and we're gonna break down what the difference of those is right now. So let's go ahead, let's create a new collection set, and we will call this test for the sake of this video. We don't want this inside any other collection set right now. We will go ahead and create that. And if we scroll down, we will see our test collection set right here, and it's empty because we haven't put anything in our collection set. Let's go back to one of our other collections right here. And we'll take a photo. We'll go ahead and we'll try and drag and drop it. And we can't drop our photo into our collection set. Very strange, but we'll find out why here in a second. So we're gonna go ahead and within test, we're gonna right click, create a new collection inside of our collection set. And we will call this collection test. I think that works. And again, our collection is within our collection set. So we can get rid of and we can expand and contract collections and collection sets by hitting those little arrows. And now that we have a collection set and a collection within the collection set, we can click and drag photos into our collections. So let's explain a little bit why that process had to go that way and what the difference between collections and collection sets actually is. So we created a new collection set and a collection set is basically a filing cabinet. That's probably the best way to describe it or a filing bin. You can see this little bin icon next to our test collection set here and within our bin, like you are storing papers or tax documents or whatever, within your bin, you'll have little folders and those folders are your collections. And within those folders, you will have pieces of paper or photos or files. So you will have your files, your photos within your folder within your bin. So I can have multiple collections within a collection set. So a collection set, holds multiple sets of collections. And that is probably the best way to describe collections and collection sets. You need to have a collection within a collection set to put your photos in because your photos, remember, go in the folders. It would be a very messy bin if that bin was just full of a bunch of unorganized photos. So you put the photos within folders within the bin or the filing cabinet. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense on the difference between collections and collection sets. So you can see on the left hand side, all of my collections and collection sets here. And usually for each photo shoot or each location that I shoot, I will make a collection set. You can see here, I have a Rocky Mountain National Park collection set. And each time I go back to Rocky Mountain National Park, for example, last December, I will make a new collection within that collection set and you can see I store all of my photos from that particular trip inside that collection in the collection set. So you can organize by photo shoot, by dates, by years, by location, however you want to do that. It's really up to you. I personally organize by individual shoots and locations. 
And then within the collection set, I will create collections for the dates or any other particular ways that I'm going to edit the photos. For example, here you can see I have a collection called IG or Instagram posts. And all of the images that I rate as a one star or a two star or decide that they need to get published to Instagram and I want to highlight those images, I will put those images inside a little Instagram collection in the bigger collection set. And all of these images will get exported to go on Instagram. Just another way of being organized. And I can also go back and remember what exactly I posted on Instagram or what I wanted to post and never got around to. So those are the basics of collection and collection sets. We did skip something though. We skipped smart collections. Let's go ahead and hit create smart collection and we can create a smart collection here. Let's have that all by itself. Smart collections are interesting. I don't use them very often. You may find more of a use for them than I do but it's a way to automatically add images to a collection set without having to do it all by hand. For example, let's create a, let's call it a one star collection and we'll collect by rating. We have a lot of other options. We can collect our images by the date they were shot, by the camera they were shot on, by the location they were shot at, and a whole bunch of other options for smart collections. And we can do greater or equal to, let's do one star for rating. We can also add other parameters to this. Let's go ahead and create. So we have a smart collection here now, and it added all of our images that are one star or greater. And you can see that is about 3,100 or 3,000 photos. And you can see we have a ton of photos here because we automatically added all of our images that are one star. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete that collection set. We're gonna go back now to our Rocky Mountain National Park collection set and our December collection within that. Let's find a photo that we like. This one looks good. And that is a very easy way to locate photos. And it's very simple to add photos to a collection set and a collection. Again, you cannot add photos directly to a set. They must be added to a collection. I can easily drag and drop. And you'll notice I will drag this one into Instagram posts. It just went from 27 to 28. My image is here at the end. But I did not lose this image from my initial folder. It is now in both folders. And if I want to go ahead, I can right click and I can remove this photo from the collection. It will not delete it from my hard drive. It will not delete it from Lightroom. It will just remove it from this particular collection. And if I happen to lose the photo, I can always painstakingly go back to all photographs and find that photo again. Photo number 8,478 out of 22,000 photos. It's much easier just to put your photos in collections then scroll through 20 plus thousand photos. You may have 100,000 photos on your hard drive. That's why it's easier to use collections and collection sets and smart collections if you find those useful. Another way to add images to collections is on import. So if I go to file, import photos and videos, and I happen to select a folder. Here we go, here's a time lapse. We covered this in the import video, but I can add photos to a collection and I must select a collection set for them to go into again within the collection. I cannot just aimlessly throw photos within our filing bin. I have to keep them a little more organized by putting them within a collection and then I can go ahead and import and those photos will be in a collection and a collection set when they're imported. So I hope you found this video on organization useful. Again, I will have another video on how to flag, rate, and color label your images. We'll go in depth into that. But that is the very basics of organization. And you can organize however you like, whatever works best for you. And one more thing to note, by having your photos in multiple collections or multiple collection sets, you just have copies of that image's metadata. You're not actually creating duplicates on your hard drive and you're not creating new folders on your hard drive. You are just creating those folders and files within Adobe Lightroom. You're not actually taking up more hard drive space, which is an awesome feature of Lightroom, 
when you make more collections. So that's all for this video. If you found it useful, please hit that like button and subscribe. And of course, share this video with a friend. And until next time, get out and go shoot.